everyone. I'm Caroline Kuria. I'm an accountant by profession. I'm also a mother. So I'm looking forward to how to equip myself as I build courage even in my children and also in myself in whatever I need to undertake. Yes. Okay, thank you, Caroline. Yeah, even me, I'm a mom just like you and I want to learn. Yeah, I think the ones I was sending to are saying you, you will learn. I will learn along with you. All right, so who else? Lillian? Good morning, everyone, and forgive me. Uh, I won't put on my camera because this working from home is challenging. Okay. <laughs> Especially for my hair. Yeah. But uh, my name is Lillian Jenga. Okay. I am a hair officer with WFP. Uh, but besides that, that is the work I do during the day. But besides that, my life, I am a mother. I have one big son, actually, a teenager. And when I saw this, I was very interested. Because the one thing I've noticed, especially with COVID-19, is that the children are stressed, but we are not able to tell whether they are stressed. And we don't know how to support them because we are used to being the African parents, telling them, sit down, <laughs> do this. So I really wanted to be equipped to be able to support him because I've also realized I'm struggling with what is happening and even the, the normal interaction between a mother and a teenager. Yeah, thank you so much, Lillian. I'm happy to hear that. Uh, Lillian is my friend. We worked together at UNDP, so it's nice to have you here. All right, um, uh, Winnie, there's a Winnie. Winnie, welcome. I don't know if she can hear me. Uh, my namesake, Grace Wairimu. Welcome, you'll unmute yourself and then you can say hello. Yeah. Can I unmute you or you can unmute from your side? Awesome. Awesome. Yes. All right. Please say hello. Yeah. Uh, good morning, ladies. Uh, my name is Wairimu Grace. Uh, I'm also a counseling psychologist specialized in marriage and family and also child therapy, a certified trainer, a certified mediator. So I wear many hats. I'm also a business consultant and uh, I'm here today to hear from a fellow colleague from her perspective of how, you know, to best take care of children this, during these uncertain times. Now that, that things have changed and everybody is really trying to adjust to the new normal. Thank you. That is true. Thank you, Wairimo. Uh, this is becoming a congregation of child therapists. So <laughs> I am sure we are going to learn a lot from all of you about how to raise um, our children well. So I'll give uh, Nancy and then Elsie after that. Welcome, Nancy. Please unmute yourself. Thank you. Um, my name is Nancy Gadingi. I'm a counseling psychologist, family and marriage. Um, I'm excited about this because one, I have a, a child. Um, so I'm here to sharpen the axe. <laughs> awesome. And iron sharpens iron, Nancy, right? Oh, yes. Yes, oh, we are yes. going to learn. Oh. All right, Karibu. Uh, welcome, Elsie, as well. Say hi to us, another child therapist uh, in training, right? <laughs> yes, I am. Thank you, Irimo. Good morning, everybody. My name is Elsie. I'm an educator who's uh, passionate about children. And like Irimo said, I'm in training as a child therapist. And uh, I work with children, I mentor children, and I'm here to be empowered. Okay. Thank you. Elsie, Elsie has, was our first ever guest in uh, Chasing Courage Conversations. Thank you, Elsie, that you always show up. Um, all right, so I think we have more people now. Um, um, Winnie, can we Winnie, hear Winnie? Can we hear Winnie? Winnie? Not yet, huh? All right, uh, Joshua, can we hear you? You can say hello. Yes, hi, my name is Joshua, and I'm interested about child uh, mental, mental health of children, because yeah. I have some kids, and so I just want I to just join in and learn something. Thank you, and for also being the first ever gentleman to join us. Uh, yeah. today yes all right uh, I think 
uh, we had Caroline, uh, Fatma, Fatma say hello, and then we'll have Vanessa. Well, Fatma. good morning, everyone. Morning. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right. My name is Fatma. I'm an educator, ECD, and I am also a practicing a child therapist. Thank you. I'm, I'm looking forward to learn more from my uh, team. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, Vanessa, you can say hello. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Vanessa Kanze. I'm a commercial lawyer, but I do children matters pro bono, and I have a special interest for children matters. And I saw this topic, and I was like, I, I really need to learn more about uh, the children's mental health. Yeah. So I'm glad to be here. I look forward to learning. Okay. Thank you very much, Vanessa. I don't know, uh, Rosemary, I think your audio has come back. So you can say hello. Hi, Rosemary, you can unmute yourself. Yes, thank you. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Um, a parent and uh, a member of PCS and Andrews, and I'm just interested to learn. Okay, okay. And I'm happy to see um, St. Andrew's um, fraternity coming to support our own. So we are very thankful. Um, God has equipped us differently. And I like what Lillian uh, Jenga has just said, that it's nice when people share their contacts on the chat. So that should somebody want to you know, reach you on the side, they can do that. Because I can hear a lot of... Um, uh, professionals here who deal with children and we can reach you um, on their side in relation to an issue that we are going through. All right, so we have others who have come in, uh, but we are near our 10 minute mark where I just um, I want to do some little housekeeping. Number one, we are going to start with a verse. I want to read for you from Psalms 143 verse 8. And it says, let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love, for I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go, for, for to you I entrust my life. And I think as parents, that is why we are here, because we are saying that we want God to teach us through faith how we can be able to raise our children. And so what we are doing is entrusting ourselves before the Lord through the um, teaching that faith is going to give us today. So let us say a short prayer. I give a few housekeeping rules and then we can begin. Let us pray. Dear loving Father, we want to come before you this wonderful Sunday morning. We want to thank you for keeping us safe. We want to thank you for provision of electricity, for provision of time, for provision of network. In whichever way it comes, I pray that you sustain that until the end of today's presentation. We thank you for faith who is going to use her skills, who is going to use um, her knowledge to educate us so that we may be better moms, better parents, um, and uh, better leaders who are entrusted with growing children to the level that you have allowed them to reach um, as they live in this world. We want to thank you, Lord. Be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have a chat and you are welcome to send in your question even as faith talks to us um, we will have like a 20 minute 25 minute con uh, question and answer time at the end so should you have a question you are welcome to type it on the chat or write it in your booklet and when time comes faith will be able to address every question um, my name is wairimo and i am the audacity mentor and I usually help moms to redesign their lives and to use the power of their odd, what I call their odd factor, so that they can win in life. And I'm particularly passionate about three areas, their faith, their family, and their finances. And so as we are here today, it's about building our family side of us, because we are not going to work, make money, and forget to be good parents. So because of that, then I have an awesome lady who is here today, uh, Faith Motegi, as you have heard, we in St. Andrews know her as Teacher Faith. So it even feels funny to just call her Faith. 
um, because she teaches Sunday school to my children. She is a counseling psychologist. She too is a child therapist. She is a blogger and she will tell you about that. She's a YouTuber, she will tell you about that. So before us is a lady with a wealth of knowledge. Uh, right now she has uh, a YouTube topic on uh, children and sexuality. And uh, she's going to teach you how to start some hard conversations. So she will tell you where to go to hear those conversations. She's still on part one as the rest of us will wait for part two. So we are all going to mute ourselves. If you need to speak or faith requires of us to interact with her, then she will ask us to unmute ourselves so that um, uh, we can maybe uh, participate in this conversation. So teacher Faith, please welcome. And uh, you have your time. I am not going to interrupt you. Um, we are here to learn. We are here to soak in all this information that you have. So thank you everybody for showing up. May we live with nuggets of knowledge to make our families better. Karibu sana Faith. Thank you so much, Wairimo. Uh, usually I go by different titles. I'm learning how to embrace all of them because as you can see, I'm in the office. So here will be Madam Faith. Uh, so even for those, some of you follow me on uh, who are, have my number, you'll see I've called myself teacher at faith because my nephews call me different. Sometimes it's teacher, then auntie, and sometimes they call me mom when they get confused. Mm -hmm. So thank you everyone uh, for being here. It is an honor and privilege. And thank you so much Wairimo for being my host and for helping me to, to have this conversation. So I know for now, we are going to just have a conversation. I, I will do it in two ways. One, I'll, I have a, a presentation, but it's mainly, we will not do the PowerPoint also. It is just, I love using pictures or pictorials or infographics. So it is just to get us to, to ask ourselves a few questions. And even by the end of it all, I believe I'll share it with you. And um, hopefully it will help you have the conversations over and over again. Disclaimer, whatever I share is, you, you're not, it's not a must that you take it all at once. It is, uh, the phrase that I usually go by nowadays is, how do you eat an elephant? But please don't go poaching. Please let us save the animals. But how do you eat an elephant a bite at a time? So there might be information coming to you from left, right, and center. So what do you do? You just take it once, one at a, at a time, okay? So if you allow me, Wairimo, I would like to share my screen just for a while. It is okay. Uh, yes. So I hope, so that's basically, yes, I'm a child psychologist. Right now I'm in the office. Uh, I work within government, but I have a passion to do with, uh, to deal with uh, children. So I want us to just go to uh, the, what do you call them? To this. When it comes to your child, if you are to drop them, like not, I'm not saying drop them physically, but if their personality, if, if their character was to be dropped, is it like this fine china that, um, that our parents used to keep for visitors? Do you believe that your child can, can withstand the pressures that life is throwing them? So right now we are in a period where none of us could imagine. So right now, look at your child, even you yourself, look at yourself and wonder, are you, if you are being dropped, the things that you are holding dear, if they were to be dropped down to the floor, would they bounce back or would they crash? So when it comes to children's mental health, we are not going to look at the conditions. It is how do we gain, get our children to be resilient enough so as mental health issues are not so much in their, in their lives. So I know there are some basic um, uh, mental health issues that I, I am really concerned about, that, uh, especially during this period. But for now, let's explore. Right now, is your child's personality, is your child's character like the fine china that you can see? Or is it a bouncing ball? Can you, do you believe that your child, something that you tell them that they're not able to go to um, their favorite, uh, their favorite what, hangout spot, whether it is the, the shopping malls or the fun parks and the rest, are they able to realize, okay, it's not, if it's not possible today, then maybe tomorrow. Is there, is there a personality one that can, uh, they can bounce back? 
even you as a parent, because one thing, if you, you will notice that I will mention both the child's personality and you as their guardian and as their parent. Because they mirror, they mirror what you are emulating. Because you are there, you are the first teacher in that kind of scenario. So is your child fine China or are they a bouncing ball? Can you answer that question? Kindani Dani, just answer which one do you think, and even you, are you a bouncing ball or fine China? Yawageni pekeake, only for the, these particular occasions. If there's even a crack, that is it. Or are you a bouncing ball that even though it gets deflated, you can go to the garage, you can go to the petrol station and get some, uh, some uh, what, air back in your, in your system. So have you added, have you written your, your personality and your child's personality, bouncing ball or fine china? There's the other character that I did not, you, you can also be an orange, but that one I will leave you. Just find out what an orange, there's the character of an orange where, let me explain it even right now. An orange is where you expect to, be, to fall. And when you fall, you expect to be squashed. You'll be like, ah, this is what you. So, but for now, I wanted to focus on the first two. Are you, is your child, um, uh, the child that you're taking care of, are they fine china or are they bouncing? Now, life is not easy. Life definitely, the way we have looked at it right now, is not easy. But there's something interesting. I love Japanese culture. Uh, these restrictions of travel are cutting down on my dreams. But there's something I love and see next. This. If I do not say it right, just don't focus on the main part. Focus on the bottom. To repair with gold, the art of repairing pottery with gold or silver lacquer and understanding that the piece is more beautiful for having been broken. So whether it's kin toss, that one, just have your own fancy way <laughs> of saying that, but focus on the fact that this plate, this ceramic item fell, but was brought back together and it is not just anything. See, oh, what was it called? It like it where we when we were growing up, chomelea, the plastic when you are <laughs> when your buckets were got got messed up and then there'll be someone with another plastic and they'll come in chomelea. In this case, it's not chomelea ya plastic, it's chomelea ya gold. So your children are grieving. I have even written some blog posts that every one of us is grieving. We have lost something or many things. We have lost dreams, we have lost opportunities. Children have lost the, the, this uh, touch with children, with their uh, being in being in school, being with their friends. We are seeing people who would have graduated, and yet the graduations are not taking place as we usually know. As we have grown up, you're told you read, get a job, and all that, get married, and the rest. Right now, things may not go back to being as seamless as possible. The other dilemma is: they will, do they go back to school? And then even though they go back to school, are we going to focus on the academic aspect of it or the, the aspect of school is no longer the same as it was? Because you know how we, when you're a child, you can remember your childhood home. There are those fair fond memories. You can even remember the last time you had a wedding, you went to a wedding. So right now, if you go to a wedding in the, in the current circumstances, it's totally different. So there's always going to be a loss. So if your child is as, as, as delicate as China and those are all, and is, is dropped and they do not know how to rebound and there's nobody to bring them back and put this gold in between, then that's where we start having mental health issues. So I want us to just focus on this. Mental health is all about resilience. If your child knows how to adapt, adaptation is the word. There's going to be a video link that I have in this presentation. You may not watch it now, but I found it so insightful that the child needs to know that even though things are not going right, something can work out in the end. So we are aiming to be bouncing balls. Yes, we may be, we may have personalities that are like um, the what, the fine cups that we have seen and the fine plates, but even though you are dropped, yes, you'll be dropped, but can you now then know how to seek for help? Because another thing that is happening is 
kila mtu anavumilia kindani ndani kimwanaume everybody okay yes and kimwanaume the same way but we are trying to see as much as possible how do i do this by myself when you are younger i'm saying this in respect for of the, the majority of the age that we are here you if you your house ran out of salt or sugar or even you just needed one or two three pieces of coal to start the jiko you would go next door right now somebody can stay in their house without asking for help at all because they don't want to be seen as less of so this thing of i cannot ask for help should not should not be part of your child's script so this is where resilience comes in it's not about there's a quote i came across it's not about failure is failure is part and parcel of life failure is not about if it's all about when failure will come hardship will show up trauma will knock on your door so how do you get that child up and running how do they bounce back when the thing in front of them is not what they wished for so that is where mental health comes into place so i will now go i i believe now i'll just come back um let's see this is where technology comes into place and the rest but as i was saying we uh let's see yeah so as i was saying by the time you are having um yes there we go good so that is i wanted to just focus on that the rest of the presentation i, I believe will come across it so this is my question how many emotions do you think how many human emotions do you think there are kindly you can either unmute or write on the chat how many emotions do you think there are anyone the basic emotions how many do you know okay thank you Irimo. okay maybe you can tell me which which are those types of emotions 10 car okay sawa sawa uh, so now you may so thank you let me see whether the so the number is increasing let us see whether the number just one person how many emotions do you think there are human emotions six okay it seems now so just there are over 20 emotions 20 but there are six well, i can see 12 it's okay but there are six basic emotions six basic emotions but we may right now let me even say, say what these six are happiness sadness fear anger surprise and disgust so if right now there was a prize my dear wairimo and uh, Catherine wanyeki mungepewa pereni but pereni for now just receive my virtual hug <laughs> so yes there are six basic emotions but my dear ladies and gents does your child know please those repeat. emotions please repeat. i can hear someone it's okay so as i was saying right now there are over 20 even close to 30 emotions does your child know any of those emotions i believe they know many happy and sad and the one that pisses us most the most is anger when they just have their tantrums and the rest so have you ever sat down and explained to your child that there are different types of emotions and how to get over them or how to express them emotional intelligence is another guide something that helps you to help the child get resilient because if they know what the emotion is, then they will know, okay, this is what is happening within. Because those small humans have no idea what is happening. They have to put a name to the emotion. You have to give them the information so that they can know what is this happening within me. Because even for you, especially for the ladies, I'm speaking on, because I'm, I'm a lady myself, just, in case, <laughs> just for clarification purposes. There's a time when you can be happy and sad at the same time. Has your child ever known that? Have you ever explained that, by the way, I am happy and I am pissed off? 
but you have to, Im to inform this child that, by the way, we need to learn about emotions. And if right now we are learning that there are over 20 emotions, and we are only focused on happy, sad, and angry, then what happens when they feel jealous? And they, are, they don't even know what jealousy is. What they, yes, they know disgust because they don't like broccoli, myself included, and stuff like that. So what are all these other emotions? And all of them usually are centered on these six basic emotions. So I know, and as, as, I, as I said in the beginning, please abide at a time. It is not a must that you now start a whole manual and you start teaching your children every single minute. Uh -uh. It is getting these moments. You know how we usually get pissed off with our moms? or those who, are, who we see are in the uh, older guardians, when you tell them something, maybe it was supposed to be a joke, and then they turn it into a life lesson. And you're like, it was just a joke. Like, how did we now start get to all the ways you, you know as a wife, as a woman, as a, no. But do you know that's how they pass on the knowledge? Right now, the children, when they watch two uh, characters on the vid on the TV kissing. If there's a kissing, whether it's on the pay, uh, the cheek or on the, um, the lips, they'll be like, oh. But when girls to teenagehood, they'll be like, okay, okay. So they are gradually learning that there are some things that they are curious about. But this is my main point. As parents, as guardians, we do not like it when children express what we call the negative emotions. But the thing about it is we have not passed on the information that by the way, I am, you can be happy, you can be sad at the same time. So emotional intelligence, they need to know the different types of emotions. You can even, I loved one of my aunties on, on, on the fridge. She had printed out all the, the types of, you're familiar with emojis, the smiley face, the disgust face and the rest. She had printed it out and stuck it on the, on the fridge. And then there was a kind of a sliding, I don't know what mechanism that was, where if maybe by after school, you could come and slide and say, because they was asking, how are you feeling today? And then there'll be a, a picture of disgust or happy, like you could slide it across. At least by that time, it becomes a conversation. So for me, number one, when it comes to uh, mental health, let the children know that there are different types of emotions. And this is how we express them in a conducive way, in a positive way. That way, when their brother picks something that they were using or now want to use, anger does not become the immediate anger because most of the time, yes, they get angry and then they hit or they bite. One of my nephews used to bite and I was like, what? I am not a piece of meat, okay, I am, but please don't bite me. So they know that, yes, I'm angry, but I don't need to hit, because then they will, you have taught them different ways of going about it, okay? So another thing that I'm concerned about when it comes to mental health, our children, unfortunately, are going to be, are now in a bubble of anxiety. And the anxiety is coming from you as a parent, from you as a guardian, from, uh, from the entire society. And if we are not careful and uh, we don't explore this discussion uh, about emotions and about what is going on in a calm way with our children, there might be an increase in anxiety disorders. A child doesn't want to go outside. A child doesn't want to play with anyone else because of a corona. If a child right now hears someone else coughing, what is the immediate reaction? Even you, you say, here's your corona. Then a child already takes it in. They, they have already been told that corona is this big monster. They, even that big, whatever, the image has been shown over and over again. So they are seeing, and the child's imagination runs wild. That's why we could believe that lions could talk. The cartoons told us. So when you go to the zoo and you're wondering, why is this, why is this lion not talking? So their imagination runs wild. So you have told them that there's a, there's a monster out there known as corona. They don't want to go outside. So if we are not careful and on how to, and we explore this issue with our children, anxiety disorders may go high. The other one that I am concerned about is eating disorders. 
eating disorders, how many times have you snacked over the last few weeks? Snacked more than usual. Wewe wenyewe. Do you snack when you're hungry? Mm, most likely not. You're snacking when you're watching the TV. You're snacking when you're talking to your, to your children or to whoever it is. You're snacking when you're what, whatever it is, you are snacking over and over again. It is a normal response. Unfortunately, it can now lead down here because we are anxious and food gives us comfort. Who doesn't want ice cream? It's nice, it's delicious. Who doesn't want crisps? It's nice. You just pass time. The popcorn that never seems to fill your stomach you will eat, you will even add caramel. You're having a good time because at least in this moment, everything is okay. That's what food does. Even the drinks and the whatever, that's where the addictions come. They make us calm down. But unfortunately, if we don't gauge, if we don't monitor, children will now, anytime they're feeling anxious, they will reach out for food as a source of comfort. So anxiety disorders may rise up. The uh, what the eating disorders may rise up, and the other one that I don't uh, that um, fifty fifty is post traumatic stress disorder. Basically, the fact that we are in this epidemic, it's someone put it as uh, what we are in, we are at war with an invisible enemy. So you're trying to figure out how to get out of this situation safe and sound without getting shot down, quote and quote. So we are looking at it, by the time you, we get out of this, we don't even know when, we don't know how. We are praying that we are, thankfully, all of us are safe. So how do you get by all this? So basically the two that I really am concerned about are anxiety disorders and the eating disorders. PTSD, not too much, especially if you take the necessary steps, okay? So, my dear uh, listeners, if right now I was to ask you where you feel your stress, if you're stressed, where do you say? Usually you can say either your shoulders, your neck, they usually that song, Naskiya Kichwa, Tumbonam Gongo, yes, all that. You're feeling your body pains everywhere. Every emotion is energy. Every emotion is energy. And that energy has to go somewhere. When you're happy, that's why you want to dance. That's why you want to sing. That's why you want to bake. That's why you want to do everything else. When you are angry, you will clench your fist. Everybody is your enemy. Basically, you're expressing energy. And if a child doesn't know how to express that energy in a positive way, pressure cooker. You know, that I don't like pressure cookers myself. I've never bought one. I've never used one. Don't remove, don't deduct marks of whether I'm wife material or not. But a pressure cooker, by the time you keep piling everything up, you do not just open a pressure, a pressure cooker at once. You have to let it release over and over again. This is where now you have to tell children that, by the way, there are times when your body is going to be a fruit salad, a cocktail of emotions you had better know how to release it. Because there are times when I, mom, when I, dad, will not be there. Case in point, when the two, when siblings are fighting over whatever it is, whether it's gadgets, whether it's food, whether it's toys, it can be anything. Who rescues who? They come, mommy, so-and-so, daddy, so-and-so, ameni chuna, ameni chapa, whatever they do. So, what do you do then? Do you solve the issue? Do they solve it themselves? What happens? They have to learn how do they manage without you being there because they have to find out how do they do it by themselves. Because if you keep rescuing your child, then they become the fine china that just crashes whenever pressure comes along. So one of the, my main points is be your child's guide, not their savior. Be your child's guide, not their savior. You can't save everyone. You can't save them from everything. They have to learn how to get their own wings, put their foot down and negotiate with their sibling, with their friend, with the world. Because if they don't learn that, when they are told no by somebody else who is not mom, they'll be like, bus, 
my world has just come crashing down because they have always been been told, oh, you want this here. They have not looked for it. They have not realized the aspect of failure. And they always need to know that for you to be a winner, there have to be stairs. And those stairs are subsequent failures, trial and errors. You can even give your own examples in life, relevant examples, depending on your child's age. So, as I said earlier, failing is, not, is a matter of when, not if. Let your child know that. Failure is a matter of when, not if. And let them know that even though they fail, you still love them. But failure is going to, it is going to show its head somewhere. So it's how do you look at it? How do you bounce back? So, my dear listeners, if right now uh, you're familiar with a pendulum, the one that for the, it's like a grandfather clock or something, just but a pendulum. When do you love your child most? When they are peaceful and they have not shown you any issues or when they are showing up with so much emotions? When do you love your child better? When they are following all your instructions or when they have kept away from you because they know you don't tap and appear. Basically, what I'm asking is, please don't make your child feel guilty for the emotions that they express. Unakuja hapa na hasira zako, unataka nifaya nini? By the time you, you belittle a child's emotions, they will not want to express it in front of you. There is, um, I believe that you may have come across this lady. She's called Karo Chakua. She also deals with children. But let me use a, let me, allow me to read this. So case in point, you have this scenario where your child has lied to you because of doing homework. Uh, ah, well, he has lied to you maybe because of, uh, about homework. And then you most of the times we either uh, smack them on the head. I don't know whether you smack them on the head, you beat them this way. I'm a, nah, there's a stick or a muiko, my mom, muiko and slippers. Those were the two elements of um, instruction. She was, a, she, was a, she was a teacher. She, yeah, she was a teacher. She's a counselor now. So let me use this phrase where you're talking to your child. And as I said, please, please, disclaimer, it is easier said than done. So the child has lied to you about their homework. So let's see how this goes. I am feeling very angry right now that you chose to lie about having done your homework. You know how much we value honesty and taking responsibility within this family. I am not in the right frame of mind to give you the consequence right now, but we will talk about it when I am calmer. What have you, I believe there's something that comes out of that, isn't it? You have expressed an emotion, and you're saying that, by the way, I am pissed off. So just know, stay away for a little while. Number two, you have mentioned a value, which I'm hoping you, you have had a conversation or even written them down. I'm realizing that there's a power, there is power in having them displayed, rules in the house, terms and conditions. Okay, you can even put terms and conditions apply within this family. You can even put it that way. Have your own twist to it. So by the time you are, you are explaining to your child that one, I am very angry. You have put an emotion to your facial expression. Number two, you are communicating that by the way, I'm disappointed, I am angry because we had discussed something about it. Number three is right now, because I'm angry and kind of disappointed, I may need time away from you. So it's not that I don't love you, it's not that I don't want to see you ever again, I just need time and then we shall talk later that communicates that by the way mom is serious about this what was it that we had about responsibility and the rest and all that so allow me so that you uh, let me know about the minutes how many how much i have but i want to share the screen again because as i said i love working with images so we had said about resilience so there is all that. What I want to focus on is this. Let your children know that there's a connection between their, amongst their thoughts, their behaviors, their bodily sensations, and their emotions. As I said, this will be available to you. I believe you'll find a way of sharing it with you. 
So how they think about themselves leads to their feelings, leads to how their body feels. That's why they feel all angry. That's why they feel all frustrated and the rest. And then the behavior shows up where they, they throw something down, they throw themselves down. So can you explore? This can be done during a calm moment, a family meeting, um, a time when it's just a discussion. Budgets are off. They're having a discussion today to no one care. So can they know that by the way, there is a connection uh, between what you say, how you feel, what your body is feeling and all that. And it goes both ways. Your emotions affect your thoughts, your thoughts affect your emotions. So it's not that I'm just angry. Yes, you're angry, but your anger doesn't have to mean that somebody gets hurt. By the time you feel you're disappointed because you didn't get a you didn't get the math uh, um, math what math problem or the algebra right doesn't mean that you're a failure. So it's all a matter of what are you thinking about. Yes, the feeling may be may, may it be what we call the negative, but is there a way you can think on a better a better way? And then the behavior is on the positive. So there's always a link. Let them know such that they know as a human being, all this is happening at any given moment. Then this is what I want to focus on because it covers. I, I love pictures. If you are in my parenting conundrum groups or if you are related with me anywhere else, I love images. And then I also uh, realize I don't try to invent the wheel. If someone has made a resource, I make use of it and this worked best for me. So we already looked at the ability to recognize the, their own emotions and those of others. So we are look about emotional intelligence. Problem solving skills. When does your child learn how to bathe themselves? Uh, when do they tie their own shoelaces? When do they learn how to cook? Uh, how uh, are you, are they being involved in, in the household? Um, household tasks, because there's a need for connection. So they need to be like, okay, so this is the money we have. But there's even another thing that I really wish parents would do right now is can you teach your children financial literacy? Pesa, pesa. Right now, can you tell them that by the money is not coming in as it was? We have this, okay, you want snacks. But we can only have we, we have this money. So how man how many snacks can this amount of money get? So would you go for the one snack that is very expensive or uh, several snacks at a cheaper rate? Because the world that they we are emerging to means they have to be sharp, sharp. You're not remember resilience. They need to bounce. If there's no money, that doesn't mean that they hang themselves. Uh-uh. If there's no money, if I'm not dressing in the finest of, of, of what dresses or the, the best of bags, the fact that I have a bag is better than, than nothing. Then goal setting with realistic expectations. I am going, I believe I'm going clockwise. Goal setting with realistic expectations. I came across a discussion online. I um, can't remember the chat, but it was this live, Facebook live. Um, is it work? I'll, I'll remember, if I remember, I'll share. But uh, they mentioned that, by the, is it possible that you sit down with your child? Age, age, age is, is important also. Um, but even the little ones, they can be self-directed because you're helping them to solve a problem. Okay, so you tell them that we have, yes, you're going to have Zoom meetings or online school sessions, or we have this uh, that has been sent. What would you like to start with? So they themselves can, can chip in and then now you you sort it out. As you notice, I love working in news, talking with my hands and gestures. I embrace that about myself. So that if they are poor at math and they put it as the last one, when you know their energy level is down, explain to them, but by the way, you eat the frog first. They say that, isn't it? You eat the frog first. Then by the time they want the easy one, the English or the Kiswahili that you find effortless, you can even read with one eye and you get the point, you'll be okay. So can they come up with a timetable and you discuss? I know it is touch and go, but find a way to relate with your child such that it's not always you who is commander in chief. Where does their voice come in? Where will they put out their voice if they not try it out with you? 
So go setting with realistic expectations with your guidance. Self-esteem. Please catch your child doing good. Right now, if you are to have a, a full scalp, what would you write? If there are two columns, negatives and positives, which column? I'm not going to go about marriage. Usually that is one that people, <laughs> when it comes to your spouse, which one, which list is longer, the positive or the, or the negative? But right now, if you are to look at the, the few, the, the months, the days that you have been with your child at home or with your children at home, what positives can you list? What negatives can you list? I think the negative is says how I'm coming that you did not, you did not. But is it possible for you to catch them doing good? And if possible, even write a letter or just list them down or have a conversation. By the way, hey, Libambika, I, I have never been proud of that in my life. Catch them doing good because every time if you're just waiting for them like this, they just know. When you were younger, mom, mom used to, you know how the, the TV with the hunchback, uh, we would call it the TV with the hunchback. We'd always wonder how comes mom used to know that we watch TV just before she came. And yet we were saying to go to Natingeneza, Saka, to go to Fanya homework. She would just start at the back there and mm, it was warm. Did we know that? No, we did not pay attention to science and all that. So self-esteem, are your children always going to be, yes, madam? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Whenever they see you, try to catch them doing good. Write a letter to your child. Tell them that just pour out your heart. I know the imamba ya kufungua roho, sasindia ningumu, lakini fungua roho, ambia mtoto, by the way, na kupenda. Just know if you know. Let the boyfriend or this, this Alejandro's out there, let them not be the first one to tell your child that I love you all. Because then her heart will go pagarasha and her body will just whoosh. No. Let you be the one and let them know that love is not just about ooh, la, la, whatever they are seeing on soap operas. Enough of that. Learning from their mistakes. You have caught them doing wrong. Okay, yes, punishment, consequences are there. Uh, so, kuchambua. let us look into this situation. What went wrong? What can we learn from this? Uh, how can we avoid it from happening next time? You may be wondering how this all gets to to um to what uh, mental health. But if a child gets to know all these things, whatever comes their way, they bounce along with it. Understanding acceptance of their own strengths and weaknesses. Um, please try not compare your child in front of in front of them in front of uh, ah, when you are with their relatives, like no joa so and so anakuwa na panga vizuri, lakini yu mingine, hai, hata sijua nitokelezea wapi. Just try not, don't shame your child, because it's it's not their fault. Even you, you don't, you're not the entire package, they, they are, there are some minuses on one side. So let them know that, so, and it's also a lesson I learned, especially with my nephews, from my sister, and my, when I became my, an auntie, auntie, like officially an auntie. I realized that I was, when, whenever they were together, and they hear, oh, they, the, they have the biggest ears. So I'll be like, by the way, so and so, Anna, Anna Fanya Evi, lakini yumingine, we anapenda kusoma, lakini yumingine ni mchezo too. So you are officially giving them cues about what they are good at and what they are not. And then they start comparing each other uh, between or amongst themselves. And yet they are supposed to be, you're supposed to bring them together, not bring them apart. So can they learn their strengths and weaknesses? Self-control. Can there's a, there's a challenge going on where small children are being given a whole, a what? Uh, there's a bowl of their favorite snack is put in front of them. Then they're told, can you stay for one minute and don't touch? Now, when they all snacking and everything is happening. So self-control, it's basically looking for situations. Like right now, you need to wait. And when you wait, good things happen. And then willingness to overcome difficulties rather than avoid them. I don't like math, but math is going to be a reality in your life. I don't like science, but especially kids don't like Swahili, social studies, and I think math. So you, you 
there are things that cannot be avoided. So how do you build your, your skills? Slow but sure, one bite at a time. And then optimistic thinking patterns, and last but not least, social skills and ability to seek assistance from others. I want to finish with that. The social skills. Let them know that they can reach out to people for help. It is not a matter of going through life by, by themselves. So I will send this, this video. Uh, I may even send it on, uh, if I, I might put it, I'll put it on Facebook, but also it will be here. So for now, there's that video. It is just, it doesn't talk much. It's just, um, it, it's insightful. I loved it. Communicates and you can even show it to your kids. And last but not least, this is how you can get in touch with more. Uh, this uh, quarantine manenos has made me decide to branch out in different ways. I like how I use, I'm branching out again <laughs> the entire screen. <laughs> so I have my blog, I, I post on Tuesdays, uh, Thursdays and Saturdays. I'm mainly talking about parenting on Tuesdays. On Thursdays, I talk about my own personal stuff, how I look at life. And then being a Sunday school teacher, I look into matters, uh, Sunday school, helping you as a parent to have something either for family Bible study or for Sunday school, home edition as I call it. Then YouTube, Nimeamua, let me become friendly with the camera and all that. So I usually, I have not yet come up with a consistent schedule, but at least the content is there for you to access. So that's my YouTube channel, Faith Motegi. If you look for that, you'll find it, or Parenting Conundrums. Then there's Telegram. Uh, they, they have a WhatsApp uh, page, a WhatsApp group called Parenting Conundrums. But, Imeja, 257 members. So we had to migrate to Telegram. So you can get in touch with me, and then I'll send you the link, and you do that. But all in all, you can get in touch with me on faithmotegi at gmail.com. And as I always say, I am here for you. So thank you so much, and back to you very much. Thank you so much, Faith. That was wonderful. I'm a visual learner, so I really understand when they are visuals. <laughs> um, thank you for also teaching us in such a, a pleasant and easy way so that we are able to absorb. I've loved your many analogies. Um, the China, the UP bouncing ball, you know. Um, I don't know if there's anybody right now who has either a comment or a question. Um, I'm seeing like we are quite organized, so somebody can either raise their hand on the uh, participants area or you can just raise your hand physically. I'll see you if I can see your face. And um, especially to thank Faith. Um, everybody wants to be, you know, appreciated when they've gone the extra step to do the hard work and even the confidence to come and talk to a large group. So anybody who has a comment or a question? So we've had Jadida is saying awesome discussion, Faith. Caroline is saying amazing. Fatma is saying that was so insightful. Thank you. We'll surely reach out, Faith. Uh, Catherine Wanyeki is saying very insightful. Thank you, thank you. Anybody who see, wants to seek a clarification, Pauline, thank you. You're at, please unmute yourself, Pauline. Sorry, yeah, thank you. So thank you so much, uh, Wairimo. <laughs> nice to see thank you, Faith, wow. <laughs> You're such a blessing. You're such a wonderful blessing. Thank you for sharing this information with us. It's really going to help us even when we are dealing with the children. Because sometimes you really make mistakes. Not that you want to do the you make the mistakes, but you don't know. You're actually parenting from an ignorant uh, point of view. And now I'm a more empowered parent. And um, I really love the analogy of the bouncing ball. <laughs> and I hope that not only my children, but all the children that you know, God has placed in, in my circle, that I will be able to make a difference in their lives. Thank you, Faith. May God bless the work of your hands. Go, girl. We want to see you going very far. Thank you. And thank you, Wairimu, for organizing this. And nice to see you. <laughs> thank you so much. Okay, do we have somebody else? Yes, I think. 
Yes, I think we'll be able to share. Um, I'll, I'll put on the chat, I'll put my contact in case you didn't have it so that you can request me when um, the recording and everything comes up, I'll be able to send to you. Caroline, I've seen your microphone is on, please, you're welcome. Yeah, so thank you, Faith and uh, Irimo for providing this platform. I have a question. Uh, what happens in terms of, uh, you've explained it to the child, the various issues. Uh, probably there is an area you find maybe they are more susceptible to. So what next? How do you now sort of uh, equip them? Because um, so I'm working on the equipping. So you've explained probably how would you help me? Maybe even deal with uh, one of those like Kanga. How do you then take them to the next step and how to be able to handle it? Because sometimes you may not even be there to... to um. Okay, um, I think I can answer. Um, there's something, okay, this is where, as I said, I don't, as much as possible, I don't reinvent the wheel. Uh, what I've come across is that there are tasks, there's something called task cards. Task cards. Um, where, like, you, or conversation starters. So it's basically like a game they can have or an exercise they can have. I don't know if you're familiar with the gratitude jar. This, the, usually where you're told if there's something good that has happened, you can put, uh, you can put it at the end of the year, you, yeah. So now you can have uh, the fact that you're trying to teach them how to handle their issues when you, and you're not there. Let me put two scenarios. One, you can have, you look, uh, go through the internet, <laughs> come up or even you can even reach out to me maybe uh, because I, I love researching and I can if I'm able to I will send them your way. Um, so you can have task cards or conversation starters. That's the word that I want to yeah conversation I'm, I'm I hope I'll convert or someone can write for me my dear anymore you can write conversation starters whereby it's like um, a set of questions which ask that um, it can be about friendship. Like I found a nice one where you have friendship, who are their friends? And they, they looked at it as friendship is like making a cake. So they give you like a list of ingredients. What characteristics should a friend have? So it will be a fun way of looking at friendship, but it will be like ingredients, directions, and whatever, presentation and the rest. So they can be that. Uh, so you can have it for them. You can put them in a jar or in a folder, and they can be doing that whether one-on-one -on -one or uh, collectively, which brings me to my second point. They, are, they can do it by themselves or uh, a fun, and that's what I'm saying, I usually research quite a bit. There was a, a, a lady who, this, is, this was in the States, but as I said, you can um, customize it to your, to your situation. So she was not at home as often. This is pre-COVID. Now we are talking about life pre-COVID, post-COVID and the rest. This is pre-COVID whereby she, she was not present as much as she wanted. And her child was pretty in getting into her teens. It was a girl. So she came up with a diary, mother-daughter diary. So the mother writes a message, puts it under there, uh, writes whatever she needs to write to the daughter, puts it under the pillow, her daughter's pillow. The daughter reads that uh, and writes her own comments and then puts it under the mom's pillow. By the time the mom comes, they do so it became like an exchange of sorts. So that was one way. That's what I was even saying about the letters. Um, then when it comes to what else? Uh, yeah, you can have either the diary, you can have the letters, or you can have the one-on-one -on -one conversation. But because you're trying to teach them independent away from you, you can have look for self-directed exercises, which I believe if you look through, if we research. We can find because I believe there's something. I'll, excuse me, there's that one for conversation starters. You're asking yourself, by the way, if uh, this situation, so it can be about drug and substance abuse, it can be about self esteem, it can be about basically anything. So it's looking for content online. The internet is a double edged sword, gives you the very best or can give you the, the worst. So that for now, that is what I can tell you, but just in case of uh, further, further uh, consultation, I'm here for you, my dear. 
Um, thank you. Hi, thank you. Know. Hi, how are you? Okay, Elsie, go ahead, and then Karen Wanyeki can be next. I'm very happy. Thank you for this uh, opportunity. You are an awesome lady, Bairimo. Um, uh, Faith, thank you for the presentation. It was awesome. I just wanted to dig into your mind or just uh, ask you. I used to define resilient as bouncing back until I listened to somebody say, why would you want to bounce back? Am I bouncing back to how I was or where I was before? Or is it more appropriate for me and you to be defining resilience as bouncing forward, especially during this season, where I'm not uh, going to go back to where I was, but going back to, like people are saying, to a new normal, something different. How would you look at this if it were you? Bouncing forward mm. or not, not bouncing back? Okay, thank you, Elsie. It's nice to have you uh, on board. But then, let me, so I don't forget, I love the fact that I am seeing familiar faces. So thank you for that. It is a blessing. Uh, bouncing back, that's, a, it's a, it, that's an interesting way to look about it. I think the bouncing back is, it may never go back because even, unless, okay, if you look at it even in basketball and you're bouncing a ball, yes, it will bounce bounce on the exact part. But I love the fact that you're saying bouncing forward. But if you look at the dynamic of um, of a what of the ball, it's it's at least there's that bounce. And if you look at even the dynamics of the ball, so it may bounce forward, it may bounce back, it may bounce all the way. But I think the thing of why why they put the two is this one breaks and goes or it's just scatters if it was the plate or the china but at least the ball bounces and then comes back they either come back but i love the forward so that's not okay this bounce whatever we are bouncing didn't work so let's see what other part so you can you, you can work with that i'm bouncing back i can bounce forward you can put both scenarios because there are some situations where you have to fix that whatever it is so blasma already call your magic but there's another one where you're like, I'm done with this ocean. Ah, no, with this pond, let me go to another to another pond. So I think it is letting letting the child know, letting ourselves know that their terms and conditions apply. You can bounce back and sort that thing out or bounce forward if this situation is not helpful in the first place. But I like that, Nime. I have taken notes, my dear Elsie, bouncing forward. Uh, yeah, it, it works. It still works. Thank you. Catherine, please go ahead. Hi, everybody. It has been very, very exciting. And um, maybe it's just, oh, volume. I'm not loud enough. Is that better? Let me try yeah, and I can hear you. It. You can hear me now. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, it's very exciting to listen. I love the part, especially of how to teach children, how to handle situations, their emotions. And I'd not thought of it from an academic angle. But I think when all these COVID things started, I was myself going through quite a lot. I have three preschoolers in my house right now, two five-year-olds and one three-year-old. And uh, I think that mommy so did, so and so did this. Mommy Are so you watching so Catherine? Did. Yes, we can. Maybe she, I, okay, just shout for but I don't think you're hearing. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, very well. Okay, thank you. Let me hold my phone there. The image may not be so good, but you'll hear me better. It's more important. So I think at some point I was about to snap with having to deal with a case to handle and sort out every five or three minutes. And I just told them, sometimes mommy needs me time. And so we call it in my house, there's no mashtakano. So I say like, I'm taking one hour out. I don't want to hear anything has gone off. And then I discovered as I was taking time off from their cases and their who fought who and who took who, one of them always stepped in. And so I was like, wow, that is so creative of them. So as I started taking my time out, I started appointing somebody. So this is the judge. This is the one who's going to decide who's wrong and who's right. And they usually really are looking forward to be the she one able, doing that. She able and to, to, usually... to write it down because I can't hear. Oh, you can't hear her. Oh, oh okay. Oh. 
Um, slowly. Um, okay, she was Can just saying that maybe I'll type yeah. something. Okay, all right, okay. Please, yeah, please cut so, so basically, they look forward to uh, sorting their own issues out. And so as we have stayed in the house more, I've found that they are able to, even without me saying I'm taking time more, they are able to sort out minor issues and they're only bringing to me the bigger ones and the bigger ones. And so I think with time, I also help them how to continue sorting that out. I also have two teenagers in the house and with those ones I've found just giving them a little bit more and more responsibility helps them become, feel better even about themselves even when they fail. Like my daughter was making chapati the other day. It was her first experience. And I just had to encourage her and tell her, you see, you've done it for the first time. And now next time we do it together and this is how we'll do it. And it helps them even deal with uh, disappointments when things don't turn out the way they expect. Our response has to be positive even when things are not so good. I guess there's always a silver lining in every cloud. So I'll type this, Faith, for your sake. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So Faith, Catherine, even as she types, she was just saying how um, your resp her, your, she was just uh, adding to what you told us about just if you feel like your energy is too high, like you can just tell your children, um, I need to take some time off. She's saying she has some teenagers and they have become more responsible. Um, so she's just uh, like emphasizing what you have told us, even though she's going to to type and um, and also saying that our response has to be positive. Um, but she will put it in her own words, but that's what I picked. She was just showing that what you're telling us actually works. Um, do we have somebody else who would like to make a comment, ask a question? I think there was a question on the chat um, from, from Lucy, Lucy Munga. Uh, I hope you can hear Faith. She was wondering how to deal with emotions of a preschooler because it sometimes feels like they do not understand. So how, how do we make the preschoolers in our home resilient? Hello, Faith. Faith? Faith, are you with us? We have lost her temporarily, but maybe uh, because we have many other child therapy psychologists, I think one of you can still help in uh, helping Lucy Mwango. Anyone? Uh, we had, is it Wairimo? Wairimo, you're, you deal with children as well. Is that something you can answer? Wairimo. Is that something you can be able to give some few tips temporarily as we wait for faith? Hello? 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 Am I being heard? I'm not sure. I seem to have an issue with the sound. I don't know if you can with, hear me. Oh, with the sound. Okay, we can hear you now. Were you able to hear the question? Hello? No. Oh, thank you, Wairimo. As Faith yeah. is sorting her, her sound. Okay. Uh, I will talk about uh, communication. Uh, communication, when we are communicating as adults to young children, especially the preschoolers, I believe this is age two to about age six. That's the age group we're talking about. Communication has to be like age appropriate. Communicating in a way that we can be able to reach these young children. And uh, sometimes when we are dealing with their emotions, uh, we might have to draw them away from uh, where they are sit with them and maybe encourage them to do some form of uh, art therapy to express. From their art therapy, whatever they put on paper, we are able to understand what they are going, they are going through. Because sometimes if you give a child who is expressing anger 
some paper to just put something, uh, the drawing calms them down. And from what they've drawn, especially if they've just scribbled things you cannot understand and they go on, on the same page, that is an expression of anger. They're just telling you, I'm, I'm angry with this. Should they draw something happy or choose bright colors, then you know this child is expressing, expressing joy. So I believe it's uh, understanding this child, understanding the personality of the child, because children's personality also start coming out. They start emerging when they are, they are very young. Like somebody just said, three children left on their own and one already wants to be a judge. So you see, you're able to identify when they are also very young. So it's just getting to understand this child and what works for this child and what is not working. And then if it's language, breaking it down to their level. Yeah, like the same way when maybe during family devotion, we read the Bible. But then for the younger child, if you see the Bible for a younger child, it will have more pictures and the prints will be larger because it's age appropriate for them to understand. So it's for this caregiver or this parent going down to that level. Maybe if you're communicating, even sometimes quoting, so that you're giving that child eye contact. They're able to see you and you're able to see them rather than you're expressing yourself and this child is seeing this, this giant and uh, maybe the child is angry and what they need is some form of, you know, some form of love. Because by hugging a child, you're also communicating to this child. You're expressing love to this child. Yeah? And uh, we talked of values. I'm just using the rules and values. Just what has been communicated, shared here. The rules and values. It, does this child understand? Are they put in such a way that they understand? Are they age appropriate? Does this child understand the consequences of doing one, two, three, four? Is the discipline age appropriate? If it's for a two-year-old, they know. Maybe it's the hands spanking. You'll do something to the fingers. Maybe if it's, yeah, sitting at a quiet corner, all those forms of discipline. So for me, it's back to a conversation. How do we communicate? Because there's a lot we call about reflective listening. Reflective listening is where you even look at the, um, what is it called? Body language. What is this child saying? If this child goes and sits in a corner, the child is telling you something. If the child is throwing tantrums, they're also telling you something. So and when we go back to communication, communication is twofold. The sender and the receiver, are they understanding one another? Because here, it could also be a lot of misunderstanding. Simply because child A does this when they are annoyed and child, child B maybe is not annoyed. They're just looking for attention. So for me, back to communication. Thank you so much, uh, Wairimo, for you know, sharing that. We actually had one of our talks from Fatma on art therapy, and we were actually made to do art therapy ah. live. So I've sent my contacts on the chat. So should you wish to have that recording, any one of you, please, you can ask me for it on my phone, and I'll be able to forward to you and it is true it really helped us so we are able to understand when we see the children coloring in such a color what that means or you know um yeah we were taken quite deep um we are sorry um <laughs> that faith is not able to hear us as clearly but thank you that you've been able to type um the questions and feedback um i hope you had a wonderful time i had a most wonderful time just learning and hosting you all. Thank you for taking time um, out from your regular schedule so that you can come and be with me. Lucy says, uh, Wairimo, that that was very helpful. So thank you for uh, taking time to fill in the gap. Uh, we, Faith, we cannot see your face, but I think you're lost in the <laughs> among the 29 people. But we are happy that you came. Thank you so much. Um, you have a calling in the way you speak and the way you put a topic that is really hard together. And so I'm very, very happy that you're able to come and talk to us. Um, Elsie says that she feels empowered. Lillian says, thank you so much. We appreciate the session was very informative. 
Sarah, who is our next uh, guest, says that she's glad it was recorded so that she can uh, be able to listen to some of the parts. Um, we are glad that we're, during your speech, you were able to, we were able to cover that. So your, your voice went in the right place. So thank you, everybody. I'm very grateful. Um, we have these talks, Chasing Courage talks, every two weeks. So we'll skip mm -hmm. next Wednesday and then the other Wednesday. Next Wednesday, uh, the other Wednesday's talk, we are just going to talk um, about uh, moms and how they can have healthy boundaries and self-care. So should you be interested in that, we have Sarah who will come on and talk to us in the next two weeks. And then the next two weeks after that, we have Catherine Tolle, who I also found here. She is an EQ, emotional intelligence specialist, and we were able to be taught by faith about the importance of emotional intelligence. So you can also um, just follow me the audacity mentor on facebook instagram i'll be able to post the adverts uh, when time comes just as a reminder so um jerry mwangi asks how can you motivate a child who easily hacks academic ta tasks and tends to want to do things last minute i am not sure um if there's anybody who can answer this uh faith do you want to try if your voice is back She's not back. I'll be able to share with you um, uh, Faith's contact so that you can just reach her in an answer to that question. Um, thank you so much and may God bless you all. We have come to an end. Um, have a blessed week ahead and a blessed weekend and may God protect you and keep you all safe. Thank you so much and see you another day. Yeah. Yes, Wairimu. Wairimo, you wanted said, to say something? I just said thank you so much for the wonderful presentation. Yeah, thank you, Faith, for that. Yeah. Okay. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Okay, bye.